comfortable and seems to have trot in the pocket second. That one's followed by Legal Scholar. My Way is fourth. And now Mars Hill, the bluegrass winner, has caught the field in his fifth as they head around the far turn. Timmy Tietrich and Smart Schooner trying to see this one through, but it's going to have company as Legal Scholar. Now tips to the outside, second and going up, pinned in along the pylons is Thinker Monkey. Three quarters in 128 and two. Smart Schooner been there every step of the way. Along the inside is Thinker Monkey. Further out is Legal Scholar. Far outside is My Way. Through the stretch, it's still Smart Schooner. A strong My Way and Dexter Dunn with a ton of trot in the outside, but it might be too late. Smart Schooner. Looking back as Tim Tietrich got it under control. My way second. That smart scooter in front. Under the wire going wire to wire in today's fifth race qualifier in a time of 155 and four was smart schooner. Here the winner of today's fifth race qualifier. Horses trying to catch the gate. We're ready for a start. Well, they're off and trotting on the inside that storm cloud fashion outside is Benny J looking to use that rail position to advantage is magic hill and the trailer is Longfellow S as the four pack will head into the paddock turn and on the lead is Longfellow S from the outside that's Benny J sitting along the rail is magic hill excuse me and the trailer is Longfellow S as they head around the paddock turn and Benny J the $255,000 purchase from the Lexington sale as the yearling is on top with Andrew McCarthy by a length and a half. Stormcloud Fashion is second. Gap of about two and a half to Magic Hill. The trailer is Longfellow S. Quarter time was 29 and four. They head single file across the back stretch. And Benny J, who participated in the Kentucky Sire Stake Final and the Bluegrass, looking strong and comfortable on the lead. Stormcloud Fashion, the New Jersey bred with a 155 and four mark here at the Meadowlands is second. Gap of about a length and three quarters to Magic Hill, who participated in the Breeders' Crown in October is third. Your trailer is Longfellow S, winner of a leg of the Kentucky Sire Stakes. Single file, no change in plot. Halftime was 59 and one. On top, Benny J continues to lead by about a length and a half. Stormcloud Fashion and Timmy Tietrich, very patient. Hitting in the pocket second, gap of about two and a half, three to Magic Hill third. Your trailer continues to be Longfellow S. They head around the far turn. Benny J trying to see this one through. Leads by a length and a quarter. Stormcloud Fashion still patient in that pocket second. Gap of two to Magic Hill. Tipping to the outside is Longfellow S. Three quarters was in 128. 28 and four third panel. They come through the stretch and Benny J trying to see this one through. Trotting up a storm and looking strong. Leads by two. Stormcloud Fashion in the pocket second. Along the inside Magic Hill drifting out is Longfellow S. Through the stretch, Benny J under wraps, looking comfortable for Andrew McCarthy. The battle will be for second. Looks like Stormcloud fashion, but your winner, Benny J in front. And today's sixth race qualifier winner, wire to wire, was Benny J finishing second. Looked to be Stormcloud fashion in 155 and two. That was Benny J. Memorial fashion still on a break. We're ready for a start. They're off. Memorial Fashion is galloping. Memorial Fashion on a break, trying to get everybody out of harm's way. Along the inside, Sky Diver. Uh, next to that one is Chasing Sunshine. That one's followed by JG's Pal and Devastate. Memorial Fashion is pulled to the outside and is on a break. They head into the paddock turn and Sky Diver, the $350,000 yearling purchase on top by about a length and a half. First time starter, Chasing Sunshine is second. JG's Pal third. That one's followed by Devastate. Way back and still off stride as number three, Memorial Fashion. Quarter time was 29 and two, and Skydiver and Dexter Dunn are on the lead and looking comfortable. Pocket trip now for the first time, or Chasing Sunshine. Right on the helmet, sitting third is JG's pal, and your trailer in single file is Devastate as the Colts and Geldings head across the back stretch in single file. Skydiver with five career starts. The green sun is green shoe on top by a length and a half. Chasing Sunshine is second. JG's pal removing the hopples that he used as a two year old is third. And Devastate, last seen winning a non winners of one in October over at Philly, is fourth. And your distant trailer and back trotting is Memorial Fashion. Halftime was 58 and 3, 29 and 1, second panel. Skydiver still looking strong on the lead. Chasing Sunshine doing exactly that. Chasing in second. JG's pal and Yannick tipping to the outside now third. Devastate contemplates a move fourth as they head around the far turn. Sky Diver have been there every step of the way. Looking maybe have company on the outside. And Yannick and JG's pal along the inside is 
Chasing Sunshine, 127 and 4 for the three quarters. They come down the stretch and still trotting up a storm of Sky Diver, but some strong chop from JG's pal. Diving to the inside on the outside is Devastate. Chasing Sunshine has packed it all in. On top, still Sky Diver by two lengths. Along the inside, JG's pal. On the outside, Devastate, but an easy win for Sky Diver in front. And your winner of today's seventh race qualifier was number one skydiver for Dexter Dunn in a final time of 155 and two. Final quarter, 27 and three. That was skydiver. All right. Well, they're off out and trouting out on the outside. That's final text along the inside. Zambuca Hanover. Center of the track is Wall Can Go. Those three are going to vie for the early lead. In between them all is Norma Pearl using the pylon position. Tandem Hanover on the far outside is Cheval Rapide. The six-pack banks into the turn. And on the outside, clearing the field now is Final Text. The Indiana Invader clears by about a length and a half. Settling for the pocket is Zambuca Hanover second. Then a gap about a length and a quarter. Back to Wall Can Go. Single file back to Tandem Hanover. Your trailers are Norma Pearl and Cheval Rapide in a quarter time of 29 and 1. They head single file across the back stretch and final text, the two time winner for Tony Alanya on top by about two. Selling for the pocket, Zambuca Hanover, the winner of last year's kindergarten classic final for two year old trotting Phillies is second. Right on the helmet there is Wall Can Go third. Gap of a length and a quarter to tandem Hanover fourth. Single file still back to Norma Pearl in your trailer, Cheval Rapide, who was the pace setter in the Jim Darty at Hoosier in September. Halftime is 59 flat. Easy 29 and 4 second panel. Opening up still by two. Final text and Andrew McCarthy. Inching in on that lead now is Sam Buchanan over second. Gap of a length and a half back to Wall can go third. We come two back to Tandem Hanover fourth, followed by Norma Pearl and Cheval Rapide as they head around the far turn. No change in the plot at all. It's still final text. Has been there pretty much every step of the way. Leads by a length and a half. Sam Buchanan Hanover and Dave Miller still patient in the pocket. 128 and one for the three quarters. They come down the stretch and final text is there by about a length and a half. Tipping out of the pocket. Pocket, Sam Buka and Hanover. Mo moving room as Wall can go. With some trot on the outside is Cheval Rapide. Off stride, tandem Hanover. Through the stretch on the outside, Sam Buka Hanover. On the inside, final tag. Sam Buka Hanover zooming by to get the lead. Up for second. Looks like it'll be a battle between Wall can go and final text. But your winner, Sam Buka Hanover. Final time, 155 and 4. Jake. We're ready for a start. We're off and trotting. Clean start. Center of the track. That's Pink Memories up for the lead. Along the inside, Southwind Banshee. Outside of that one is International Model. Those three will vie for the lead. We come back in post position order to Southwind Cream. Your trailers are Fortunia It and Hippie Shake as they bank into the paddock turn. And with the lead is Pink Memories gearing up for its first Power Mutual start. And her second consecutive qualifier here at the Meadowlands on top by a length and a quarter. Sitting in the pocket is Southwind Banshee. That one's followed closely by International Model. Gap of two and a half to Southwind Cream. Then we come a gap of about four to Fortunia It. And the trailer's Hippie Shake quarter time was 28 and three. Single file and that's Pink Memories. The daughter of Uncle Peter on top by a length and a half. Southwind Banshee. Very patient, grafting along in the pocket second. International model who led at the three-quarters mark of the kindergarten finals before tiring last year at the Meadowlands is third. That one's followed by Southwind Cream with the hobbles back on fourth. And single file to Fortunia It and Hippie Shake is sixth. Halftime was 59, a pedestrian 30 and two. Second panel for Pink Memories and Dave Miller. Miller still on top. Now kicking it on the outside. That's Yannick Jingron, international model with a quick brush goes right to the lead and goes right on by. Puts Pink Memories back into the pocket. That's third for Southwind Banshee. Gap of a length and a half to the trailer. Southwind Cream, Fortunia, and Hippie Shake. But International Model has given them the slip with a 155-2 and two mark here at the Meadowlands last year. Looking strong and clear by five. Pink Memories second. Kicking off the cones is Southwind Banshee third. But it's all International Model going off the course off stride with Southwind Cream. On the outside, that will be Southwind Banshee second and Pink Memories third. But just a walk in the park for Yannick on a beautiful now day at the Meadowlands. Leads it by about seven or eight. Southwind Banshee second. International Model looking strong. That was Yannick Gingras with a bold move. International Model, your winner of today's ninth race trot. 
in a time of 155 and 4. That was International Model. Lindy's Landing will start about five or six lanes behind. We're ready for a start. Well, they're off and trotting along the inside. Wolko and Bob Kivlin uh, up for the lead. Outside that one is Periculum. Further out, Lindy's Landing. A big gap. Excuse me. That's Yakin Hagar third. Big gap back to the slow starting Lindy's Landing as the four trotters head into the paddock turn. On top is Wolko and Robert Kivlin lead by about a length and a half. Periculum will settle for the pocket second. Length and a quarter back to Yakin Hagar third. Distant gap back to the trailer is Lindy's Landing as they head out of the paddock turn. Wolko, named after Robert Krivlin's Wolko Foods, which he owns and is an executive at on top by a length and a quarter. Periculum, who has a 150 and two mark as a three-year-old at Lexington, is up now to challenge and gain the lead. That puts Wolko back into the pocket. Gap of about a length and a half back to Yakin Hagar. Distance of about 15 lengths back to Lindy's Landing as they're single file across the back stretch and Periculum, fifth place finisher in the 2022 Hamiltonian and winner of the William Wellwood Elimination in 21, leads in a halftime of 58 and 4. Pocketed up is Wolko, who won a division of the Simpson and New York Excelsior, Excelsior second. That's Yakin Hagar, the Kentucky Invader third. Gap of about 10 back to Lindy's Landing is fourth. They head around the final turn, looking strong on their lead is Periculum. $340,000 purchase as a yearling has scooted away by six. Tipping to the outside is Yakin Hagar going to challenge for second. Wolko along the inside and deep back to Lindy's Landing. Three quarters was in 127 flat. Trotting up a storm and looking strong is Periculum and Matthias Melander up on the outside. Some strong late trot from Yakin Hagar. Dropping back is Wolkar and struggling today is Lindy's Landing. But it's all Periculum under wraps and looking strong. Periculum hitting the timer in front in 153 and 4. Finishing second, Yak and Hagar. Third was Wolko. That was Periculum, 153 and 4. So we're ready for a start. They're off and pacing, battle up for the early lead. That's fun with flags. Further out, Sarasota Hanover along the inside. That's Where's Larry? And from the back, Rocket Deo. The four horses will bank into the paddock turn. And Sarasota Hanover with a 150 and one mark here at the Meadowlands last year. Scoots away by two and opens up. Fun with flags will settle for the pocket second. Length and a half better the back to Where's Larry? Fourth consecutive qualifier for that one is third. Your trailer, Rocket Deo, the $310,000 yearling purchase back at Lexington is fourth. Straighten out across the back stretch. Quarter time was 28 and four. Sarasota Hanover, a third in the kindergarten finals last year, looking strong on the lead by about two and a quarter. Fun with flags is comfortable in the pocket. Second, where's Larry? Sits in third in the trailer. Rocket De Deo, last seen in the Great Lady at Mohawk in September, is fourth. They go single file, no change in plot as they approach the half mile marker. Sarasota Hanover, the Linda Toscano trainee with Scotty Zeron looking strong on the lead. Halftime was 57 and 4. Second panel of 29 even. Inching into that lead is fun with flags. His second gap of a length and a half to where is Larry? And followed by Rocket Day of the trailer as they're still single file heading into the final turn. Sarasota Hanover looking strong and opens up by three. Fun with flags is second. Contemplating a move to the outside is Where's Larry and Tim Tietrich third. Trailer is still Rocket Deo. But Sarasota Hanover last seen in the three diamonds here at the Meadowlands. Looking strong. 126 in one and opens up by four. Center of the track. Fun with flags. Up the inside will be Laz Larry. Trailer is Rocket Deo. But looking strong is Sarasota Hanover. Some strong late pace by Where is Larry? Up the rail on the outside. Rocket Deo. But there's no doubt about this one. Sarasota Hanover in front and drawing away. Close for a second between Lairs Larry and Rocket Deo. That was an easy win. Sarasota Hanover in 153 flat.
Good evening and welcome to Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. And Tactical Mounds, number one, in our first non-wagering New Jersey Breeders Maturity for four-year-old mares. She is a brown trotting mare by Tactical Landing. Tactical Mounds, driven by Scott Siron, trained by Megan Scran for the stable Tactical Mounds of Guelph, Ontario. One horse walk around here for Tactical Mounds in our first non-betting affair. Beautiful day here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Mainly sunny skies, around 70 degrees. Winds are light from the south, southwest, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Non-wagering race one for $12,500. And a one-horse walk around here at Tactical Mounds with Scott Ziron, the money man in Tactical Mounds. She pulled a post-10 upset in the Continental Victory on Hamiltonian Day in 152-1, and one, and she is off and trotting Tactical Mounds there. She scored another post-10 upset in the New Jersey Classic Final later in 20. 23 and 152 and 1. She was also a 153 and 3 winner in the Circle City at Hoosier Park. Took her mark of 152 in the Pegasus at Hoosier Park in Indiana. Tactical Mounds about to reach the opening quarter here with Scott Siron. She's by the Red Hot Hamiltonian winning sire Tactical Landing, whose tactical approach was the 2023 Dan Patch three year old Trotter of the Year overall trotter of the year as well as new jersey horse of the year that opening quarter was 28 and four fifths and like the great muscle hill tactical approach won the hamiltonian kentucky futurity and the breeders crown as well standing his first season at diamond creek farm in pennsylvania getting set to pass the half here is tactical mounds and scott Ziron. And her sire, Tactical Landing, could go back-to-back -back with the, this season's top handball prospect, last year's Dan Patch Award winner, Carl. Tactical Mounds here was a $27,000 Lexington Selected Sale yearling coming into her four-year-old season with earnings of $324,489 for the stable Tactical Mounds, prepped by Anthony McDonald and Jason McGinnis with a winning qualifier at Northfield Park in 156-2 and two on March 28th. And, of course, her driver's a three-time Hamiltonian winner, Scott Ziron, the money man, the 2023 Driver of the Year. That three-quarter time was 127-3. and three. So 28-4, and 58-1, and 127-3. As Tactical Mounds trots home here for Scott Ziron in the New Jersey Breeders' Maturity first leg. Tactical Mounds is home in 156-1. and one. Once again, those fractions 28 and 4, 58 and 1, 127 and 3, and 156 and 1.
taking the first New Jersey Breeders Maturity non-wagering race tonight to Tactical Mounds by Tactical Landing out of Mounds by Yankee Glide, bred in Ohio by Springhaven Farm and owned by the stable Tactical Mounds, Guelph, Ontario, trained by Megan Scran, Scott Siron in the bike. 2024 debut, 10th career victory, 156 and 1, final quarter 28 and 3 for Tactical Mounds.
And here's the field for non-wagering race two. New Jersey Breeders Maturity, four-year-old pacing mares. Number one is High Fashion Star with Scott Ziron driving for Mark Ford and All-Star Racing Incorporated. That one just coming on the track here from the paddock. Number two is Two Pistol Annie with Dave Miller. Izzy Estrada trains for Brenda Selwyn Waxman and Tess Waxman. And number three is Lisa Lane, Patrick Ryder drives for Chris Ryder. Patrick Ryder and Chris Ryder co-owners with Nadia Tarnawa. A field of three here for the First Division, New Jersey Breeders Maturity, a non-wagering event. A trio of four-year-old pacing mares lined up here for our second non-betting affair. First division of New Jersey's Breeders' Maturity. New Jersey Breeders' Maturity, High Fashion Star, Two Pistol Annie, and Lisa Lane.
Bears are off and pacing in post position order. High fashion star on the inside leaves it sharply for Scott Ceron, goes right to the top. And to the inside, two pistol Annie. Lisa Lane is third around that first turn and heading to the opening quarter. High fashion star, a daughter of Huntsville, was a force in New York Sire Stakes and New Jersey or New, New York Excelsior A Series. A close third in the Bluegrass. Uh, a division of the Bluegrass at the Red Mile was race time there at 149. She leads the way past the opening quarter in 28 and 3. High Fashion Star banked $130,000 and took a mark of 152 and 2 at Tioga Downs for trainer Mark Ford. She is a homebred for New Jersey based All Star Racing, makes her second start as a four year old on Lasix and is in front here with two pistol Annie second. She is a four year old by Lazarus who posted back to back $100,000 seasons. She's making her first start back stateside in the Izzy Estrada barn off a winning qualifier at Freehold over a sloppy track there in 157 and four. And in third is Lisa Lane. Daughter of Lazarus, who won her second start back after a short layoff in 152 and 3 as the heavy favorite and took a mark of 152 and 1 back on February 9th with a final quarter of 26 and 4 fifths. And they remain in post position order here. High fashion star, two pistol Lanny and Lisa Lane. That halftime was 57 and 4 fifths. As two pistol Lanny, Deuce pops right now and Lisa Lane comes three deep. So the uh, four year old pacing mares. Our stride for stride here, three across the track. High Fashion Star digs in here to outsprint them. She is the daughter of Huntsville for Scott Ceron and Mark Ford. And charging late as Lisa Lane is looking to win again with Patrick Ryder. Chris Ryder on the outside. It's going to be tight. High Fashion Star, Lisa Lane nails her on the line. Lisa Lane over High Fashion Star, two pistol Annie third in one, 52 and four. Those fractions again were 28 and 3, 57 and 4, 126 and 3, and the mile 152 and 4. A final quarter here of 26 and 1. Lisa Lane, a daughter of Lazarus, who won her second start back after a short layoff in 152 and 3, is the heavy favorite. And took a mark of 152 and 1 back on February 9th with a 26 and 4. Unleashes that big rally here today. Uh, the Chris Ryder trainee, lifetime earnings coming in today of $219,796. Her sire, the well decorated triple millionaire Lazarus, who stands at Dale Valente Farms. Lisa Lane, daughter of Lazarus, is bred by Terra Hills Stud Limited and Glenn Bechtel of Ontario. Chris Ryder, the trainer and co owner from Allentown, New Jersey, and driver. Patrick Ryder, Bordentown, New Jersey, a co-owner with Nadia Tarnawa. Lisa Lane with her third win on the season, ninth career victory, 152 and 4, final quarter on the board, 26 and 1. Winning this division of New Jersey Breeders Maturity, Lisa Lane.
Coming up, our third non-wagering event, New Jersey Breeders Maturity for four-year-old Pacers. And here they are for our third non-betting affair this afternoon, or early evening. One, Captain Bat Boy, Dave Miller driving Captain Bat Boy for trainer Tom Fanning and owner Joseph Smith, a son of Captain Treacherous. Number two is Vuka Fallis, two-time New Jersey Sire Stakes champion Jordan Stratton drives for Michael Russo and owner Michael Pagonis. Number three is on debut with Patrick Ryder. Owned and trained by Michael Rizzo. And the four handle like a Porsche with Dexter Dunn. Trainer Chris Ryder, a co-owner with William Ezzo, Robert Mondillo, and Barry Spack. So it's Captain Batboy, Vukafalas, on debut and handle like a Porsche. Lining up for our third non-betting race, non-wagering New Jersey Breeders Maturity, four-year-old Pacers, horses and geldings, Captain Batboy, Vukafalis on debut, and handle like a Porsche. And the four-year-olds are off the pacing, handle like a Porsche. Alert start from the outside, Captain Bat Batboy. Captain Batboy from the inside speeds up and handle like a Porsche. Those two sparring early here with Vuka Fallis back in third and on debut. Trails the quartet fourth as they head around the first turn. It's Captain Batboy assuming command. Vuka Fallis assumes second here, handle like a Porsche backed away to tuck in third, then on debut fourth. Captain Batboy, son of Captain Treacherous who went wire to wire the 2023 MGM Grand Messenger Stakes.
makes his four year old debut with a mark of 149 and three at the Big M and earnings of two hundred thirty nine thousand seven hundred ninety three dollars. He was a two hundred thousand dollar yearling. Tom Fanning trains for Joseph Smith. Dave Miller the Hall of Famer off that quarter of twenty seven and one for Captain Batboy. Right behind him is the two Vukafalis, the son of Lazarus, with a hefty bankroll, nearing $600,000. New Jersey Sire Stakes champion in 150 as a freshman, and he romped in last year's Sire Stakes final in 149 and 4. He won a New Jersey Classic final in a career best of 149 and 2. This Michael, Michael Pagonis homebred makes his four year old debut here for trainer Michael Russo in line to uh, Jordan Stratton. That half was 56 and 1, 29 seconds, second quarter. Captain Batboy, Vukafalis. And uh, handle like a Porsche, third on debut, fourth and dropping back as they turn for home. Here comes Vukafalis out of the pocket, and handle like a Porsche swings to the outside as they come after Captain Batboy. 123 and 4, 27 and 3, third quarter speed from Captain Batboy. Vukafalis on the outside bears down on him, and so does handle like a Porsche on the outside. Captain Batboy digging in. Vukafalis getting to him. Vukafalis handle like a Porsche right there on the outside. Lunging late. Handle like a Porsche is coming and it's close. It's very tight. Vukafalis and handle like a Porsche. They hit the line together. Noses apart. Then Captain Batboy and on debut. 150 and 4. 27 flat. Final quarter sprint. There was a photo for win there. Fractions again, 27 one, 56 and one, 123 and four, and the mile 150 and four fifths. Well, it was indeed close, and it was too close to call. It was a dead heat for win between the two and four. Vukafalis and Handle like a Porsche hit the line together in a dead heat for win here. 150 and four, Captain Batboy third on debut fourth. Number two, Vukafalis, a son of Lazarus, out of In It to Win a Fortune by Cam's Fortune. The breeder and owner, Michael Pagona, Saddle River, New Jersey. Trainer, Michael Russo, and driver, Jordan Stratton. New Jersey Sire Stakes champion at two and three. He won a New Jersey Classic final in a career best 149 and two here. And makes his 2024 debut. Closing in on the $600,000 mark in career earnings. Vuka Fallis, a finalist in the North America Cup at Meadowlands Pace as well. There's the four handle like a Porsche. The son of Lazarus with a mark of 150 and 1. And career earnings now pushing past the $300,000 mark. He was a $100,000 yearling. As a two year old, he was runner up to Vuka Fallis in the New Jersey Sire Stakes final. 
He went on to win three in a row with a pair of Grand Circuit events, the Red Mile, plus a Breeders' Crown elimination as well. And he nosed out Vukofalis in a late-season homegrown division as a freshman. Makes his second start of 2024 for trainer and co-owner Chris Ryder. Owned by Chris Ryder, William Ezzo, Robert Mondillo, and Barry Spack. Dexter Dunn driving handle like a Porsche. Jordan Stratton with Vukofalis. Both in the winner's circle here in that dead heat for win. And the battle to the wire was 27 flat, 150 and 4. That completes our three non-betting races tonight. And there's your photo finish on your screen. That dead heat between the two Vukofelis and four handle like a Porsche in 150 and four. Post time for the first of 14 live races tonight at 6.20. the gate. Oh, they're off and pacing from the outside. Mr. 305 and Yannick shooting up for the early lead. Using the pylon position is the Dragon Reborn. In between them is Calistoga. Go a length further back to a tough nut to crack is in fourth. Your trailers are Belmar and Laugh Shop as the six-pack heads into the paddock turn and from the outside clearing the lead is Mr. 305 and Yannick. They open up by a length and a half. Settling for the pocket today is the Dragon Reborn. We come a gap of about two and a half to a tough nut to crack. That one's followed by Calistoga. Your trailers are Belmar and Mr. 305. Quarter time was 29 even. They straighten away across the back stretch and the Nancy Tactor trainee, Mr. 305 who participated in the homegrown in the New Jersey Jersey Classic here last year on top by about a length and three quarters. The Dragon Reborn gearing up for the first power mutual start is second. Another length and a half back to a nut, tough nut to crack third. That one's followed by Calistoga. The $175,000 yearling purchase is fourth. Your trailers are Belmar on his third consecutive qualifier. And the trailer is Laugh Shop the first timer. 58 seconds is the halftime. Duplicating the 29 second second panel with the first and on top is Mr. 305 looking strong on the lead but's going to have a challenge on the outside that's a tough nut to crack in David Miller is second and going up pinned in along the pylons is the Dragon Reborn gap of about four back to Calistoga tipping to the outside Belmar and your trailer still left shop on the outside though a tough nut to crack has put a nose in front battling back along the inside Mr. 305 three quarters 126 and two they come down the stretch and on the outside that's a tough nut to crack along the inside. That's Mr. 305. In between them, trying to split him is the Dragon Reborn. Through the stretch on the outside, that's a tough nut to crack. In between horses, the Dragon Reborn on the inside, Mr. 305. Down to the wire. On the inside, the Dragon Reborn is going to win it all. Strong close splitting rivals was Andrew McCarthy with your winner, the number one, the Dragon Reborn. And a final time of 152-4, and four, final quarter 26-2, and two, the Dragon Reborn. Oh, Hawk, and number five, wish you well. We're ready for a start. Oh, they're off and pacing from the outside. That's wish you well inside. That one's Mirage Hanover. Along the inside, that's Captain Luke. Now Captain Luke will forge to the top. Using pylon position, Total Stranger cuts the corner and tries to garner the pocket second. We come back to better as nice third. On the outside, that's wish you well. Battling with Mirage Hanover as the 